Hey, it's uh, September, early September. Fall fishing is just around the corner. We might be a little early, Cam, but we're gonna go give it a give it a roll today. I was out on Monday and we did well. Did you? In the wind and the rain and the misery, we, we we caught some fish the way we'd normally catch fish in the fall. You know, the fall hunts are just around the corner. You're uh, packing a rifle. Don't forget a rod. We're gonna go over some techniques today and it should work not only at Strawberry, but Panguitch, Otter Creek, a uh, bunch of like Fish Lake. Yeah. The nice thing is trout fishing in Utah is really consistent, so whatever you learn here will probably work there. Oh, could you pick a more beautiful day? All right, so we're not going to pound shorelines. You got us out in the middle of Renegade. Why is that? I could BS my way into this and say I, I know something, but I really don't know. Okay. The fact is, we've just been catching fish here. Okay. And so we keep coming back. Uh, Fall fishing on strawberry is really just a matter of coming up here and having fun, yeah. right? We're not targeting kokanee. We're not trying to do anything other than just put fish in the boat. Cutthroats, we have a lot of them in the reservoir. Coming up and throwing some jigs at them in the fall is great. Anybody can come up here and you catch a bunch of fish. Matt's got a cast master on. You know, Matt's gonna figure out really quick that there might be more productive ways to fish. All right, uh, you go with the tube jig, I'm and, gonna and go look, with the pointer minnow. Yeah, eagles. I'm going for big fish. See, nobody listens to me. <laughs> oh, is that on the cast master? <laughs> I'm giving him credit about the cast master and he hooks up. I've got more if you want. So. <laughs> Little cutthroat on a, on a cast master. As soon as we get that first taste of fall, so it's usually in late August, the water on top, that top layer of water cools off and then the lake does something called turning over. It's where the colder water on top flips, sinks, and it kills off some of the moss. It gets a little murky and it's kind of a signal, I think, for the fish just naturally that it's time to start to get a little bit more aggressive. There's a fish. And it just makes fishing easier. Oh, fish on in the back. We got doubles. Cast master and the pointer. I'm gonna net this fish just because I got trebles on there and I may have been born tonight, but it wasn't last night. I don't want to get a hook in me. Nice slot cut. All right, corner mineral cut one. Matt's over here with number two. Let me get you a net, Matt. On a cast master, never would have thought. I like the Jake's lure of deep fishing. They catch anything. There, we there go. he is. <laughs> Third time's a charm. Yeah, so on Monday I was over here and it was blowing you know, tropical storm force with, with the group and we had to fish really heavy jigs and threw a lighter heavy jig on there, something that'll sink a little bit slower and give me a little time to get where the fish are because they're, they're in the top of the water column this morning. Hooked up. How are you working that jig for people that haven't used the white tube jig before? Just a, just a slow retreat with a little pop, a little action in the water. So it's just a little inch long white tube jig right here, tipped it with a little bit of worm. These cutties, they just want the worm, really. Um, they get a lot more active just as soon as the water temperature starts to drop. And once they start getting active, you can come out here, tip anything bright with a little bit of worm on it, or if you're like Matt and Eagle right now, uh, just throw something that flashes and you're gonna get fish. Oh, fish on! The cast master is king this morning. We're gonna sell some cast masters. <laughs> Blue and chrome. I use these a lot with my kids. Are you letting it sink very far? Not not sinking at all. Not too much. Just slow retrieve. And then reeling it in. Yep. Nice job. Nice fish. That might be the big fish so far of the day. Nice. Yeah, that's good fish. 17, solid. Got another one on behind you, Jared. Oh! Decided it didn't like the boat. That's a nice cutty. 16, 17 inch fish. Tube jig again. This is staple for strawberry in the fall. White tube jigs and cutthroat trout. Fishing for cutthroats is as good as it's been in a few years. But how is the fishery doing as a whole? The kokanee population seemed to be down this year, but rainbows seem to bounce back a little bit. To find out some answers, we thought we'd ask the Strawberry Project leader, Alan Ward. 
strawberry's doing pretty good. Yeah. You know, in, in most respects, we're doing really good. Uh, we're really excited by the fact that the, the cutthroat populations have rebounded. About five years ago, the cutthroat populations were down, and we've been able to get those back up a bit it's to where we're kind of in that range where we want them. That's huge! A monster! The rainbows were also struggling and we were able to get the rainbows back up. We changed some of our stocking strategies. The rainbows are doing really good. Whoa! Holy cow, look at that. Look at that rainbow. And the, the kokanee, I wouldn't say a bad, but it's not as good as the other two. It's not the worst we've ever seen. We have seen years where, where it was worse, but, uh, but it's definitely not as good as it's been in the previous five or six years. So we're, we're a little bit concerned by that, and we are looking in ways to try to improve that if we can. As soon as you set it down, I looked over, the thing was dancing. I'm like, it's hard to put your finger on exactly what it is that's causing the kokanee populations to decline this year. Um, I would say one of the big factors that influenced it here at Strawberry, anyway, was the drought that we'd seen in the previous few years. When most of these fish would have been born, they came out of a year class where we were extremely dry up here. And some of our streams were completely dry. Yeah. And so they didn't even have places to run up and spawn. Uh, the Strawberry River here, we were able to get some into the trap, but it was difficult. Uh, we had to actually dig channels just to get the fish up the river. It was, it was so dry that year. So that had an impact on our natural reproduction for sure. Uh, there's other factors that can play into that, you know, predation by the increasing cutthroat populations, for instance, can, can play into that a little bit. This one's coming in. I can feel it. One thing people need to realize is it's a one-year species. You know, we're, we're dealing with one age class of fish. Oh, bring him, bring and so when you go out there in the summertime in June, July, and you're trying to catch kokanee, that's a, a three-year-old fish, and as soon as they die that fall, they're gone. And then the next year is a completely different age class of fish. And so one year to the next can fluctuate dramatically. We had a rough year. Our gill net surveys are showing that our population's a little bit down, and it kind of coincides with the cutthroat population that's inflated right now. And so it, we'll see if that fixes itself over the next couple of years. We, we think it will. Got him that time! <laughs> Watch, you need it. I had to switch to the tube jig. That was fun. He actually swiped at it, missed it. Water's clear enough. I could see him come back, just let it fall, and he came back and put it in his mouth. Finally, let me get a good hook set on him. There we go. All right, the snout. Little guy. But hey, tug is the drug. Thanks, buddy. Oh, it was hot. There we go. Got him, huh? Starting to poo poo camp spot and he hooks a fish. He smashed it too. I couldn't even miss him. Welcome back to Strawberry. You know, we did really well in Renegade out in the middle in about 60 feet of water. I think Brian's fork would be good as well. We tried fishing the shorelines and the narrows, but didn't have near the success. The fish will eventually move into the shallows, but it might take some colder weather before that happens. Nice cutty. 18, 19 incher. And what'd you catch him on? The old Rapala. CD7. Eat it. There he is. That's fun when you get to watch him eat it. Sight fishing for cutthroat. That's one thing nice about these. Fishing with a tube jig, especially with the night crawlers, if they hit it once, man, do not rip it away from them. Just keep jigging it, enticing them. They will come back most of the time. Doubled up. First rainbow of the day. Yep. Nice little rainbow. Chasing the minnow for whatever reason. Oh, Matt's hooked up. He's got a rainbow too. Their purpose in strawberry from a management perspective is to be a harvestable fish. Um, we don't get a ton of them, but uh, the state plants sterile rainbows every year just so that people come up here who want to take a fish home have that option um, in that species. Good looking fish. But we're getting some more carryover. We're finding some more fish from year, year to year that are better rainbows, which is what we had this summer. Some two, three, four pound fish uh, coming out. And shoot, those are a lot of fun. Little rainbow again. I think it is a rainbow, huh? When you come up this fall, you'll notice some changes at Strawberry Bay Marina. They're just getting ready to start some construction, but hope to keep everything up and running while they do. We're putting in a couple of new buildings. One will be a hotel that's bigger than the one we currently have by about three times, just trying to catch up with Utah's population growth. And then the other is a new store and, and a restaurant facility, again, 
catching up with uh, with youth demands. We'll still have our existing lodge and rooms and cafe services that are functioning as normal as possible. Dang good thing you brought your neighbor. Matt killed it. I know he caught more than double our fish. You know, I sometimes I get desperate and I have to I have to pick somebody that I know is gonna bring home the bacon and, and Matt's that guy. He brought a lot of fish today. I know he doubled us up, so that was a good good day of fishing. Hey now just a quick reminder uh, for people that want to come up, you do have this special in the fall. It's already going? Yep, yep. It, uh, any reservations that you make for rentals uh, on our pontoon boats, just reference the code FALLBACK20 yeah. and it will knock 20% off of any weekday rental for you. Get up here and go fishing. Yep. Big changes in store for Strawberry. I'm excited to see it. Swimming pool and a hot tub and a sauna for Eco. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we did that just for Adam. Good, good. I need it. I'm getting old. Hey, I'm Adam Eco, KSL Outdoors. You're ready to get out with your family, your friends. Come up to Strawberry, do some fall fishing outdoors. We'll see you next weekend. Good night.